Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I hope to spend most of the time testing out the Maximus launcher, the new version of it with the aerodynamic straights that will help prevent roll issues and the new bottom end of it which will hopefully not disintegrate when it gets too low in the atmosphere. So that is the goal of this episode to bring the Maximus back safely. But uh, in doing so, of course, we want to launch missions, and the one that I had lined up was the asteroid, the E-type asteroid that's going to enter Kerbin's sphere of influence in three days. But looking at the contract screen, we have, and the purpose of the E-type as asteroid was to bring it into Minmus orbit to give Minmus a moon, but here we've got bring a newly discovered Class C asteroid into an orbit around Minmus, as if the program was thinking along the same lines, and uh, it's, it's given about a million funds to do this, and uh, lots of science. So, I, I'm sorry, I've, I think maybe we should aim for the Class C. I, I'm going to accept this contract and use that contract to fund our testing of the, of the Maximus launcher. So let's take a look at the, at the tracking station to find a Class C asteroid. I'm not saying that we won't do a Class E eventually, but uh, let's... I mean, the contract is so juicy that I can't help it. We gotta try for this Class C. Well, there's one. It's a while, though. 29 days. This one is bound to be even further. This one doesn't even approach Kerbin at all. Now even if uh, we've got a uh, long time to wait on the asteroid, and I, I'll, I'll want to... Let's see, can we add this SOI change to here? Yeah. Okay, so even if we've got a long time to wait, we can launch the, the tugs, the space tugs that will bring it in long before we get to actually wrangling the asteroid, so that's not a problem. Maybe we should try out the E-type first, since we've already got that uh, coming in so soon. Uh, where is it? Uh, is that the one? Yeah. So this is the E-type that we were looking at. Let's try it out. and uh, But we'll fulfill the contract with this C-type here. Okay, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think we can do this. The main thing is to make sure that the Maximus launcher is recoverable. Alright, so to the VAB. All right, so uh, here is Space Tug Gamma now with the Maximus uh, 5A launcher, and I've decided to go with just a single stage, uh, a single nuclear stage instead of the two-stage version. It ends up being quite a long vacuum time, half an hour. I hope to never have to sit through that, but uh, nearly 10,000 delta V. So the changes are pretty pretty obvious. We've got aerodynamic strikes running down like this. Very definitive. Eight of them to really force the issue. And of course they also change the aerodynamics so that uh, we have better balance. And uh, we only have one tank down here. Remember there used to be two tanks here and uh, now there is one. And I hope that uh, serves to help that joint out. Also one thing that will help the joint out is that the second tank, the one that was uh, closer to the main body, was actually the attachment point for these uh, tail connectors. And instead of doing that, now these tail connectors connect to the main body, and I hope that will also serve to reinforce stability. We are still using uh, these odd little structural elements instead of the pistons to extend the gear a little bit further down, and the gear will extend like so. I believe that should provide sufficient stability. Once again, we don't have a great many parachutes to work with, so uh, it will have to use this reserve fuel to make a soft landing. And I'll have to... Well, well, we'll see how that works out. And otherwise, we also have the retrievable second stage, let's recall. So this is still here. And we will try to... Oh, well, this is quite a lot of parachutes actually, but just not enough to make a soft landing. Anyway, let's uh, let's get to work. Let's see if this actually manages to return safely. 
All right, it's uh, 250,000 funds, a little bit less than that. So with the million dollars altogether, that, well, million dollars if we fulfill the contract to bring back the C-Class asteroid, uh, we'll get four chances to test this Maximus, all right? So, well, let's see how many we need. Okay, here we are. Please don't fall apart, please don't fall apart. Uh, looks okay. Throw this up, SAS is on. Uh, we don't need FMRS, we're going straight to orbit. All right, let's, uh, let's go. Lift off, all right. So a lot of people have been recommending air brakes, and that that will be a next thing. Uh, there are two ways to implement air brakes. You can do spoilers with the control surfaces, or use B9's air brakes. And I have added B9, but not the whole package, just the air brakes. Uh, I, I I couldn't fit the whole package in uh, in my RAM space right now, so uh, not without making everything unstable. So I've got uh, just the B9 air brakes and a couple of other select parts. And so uh, we can add those in once I determine that this is at least viable. I want to get uh, certain things nailed down before. Uh, air brakes are helpful, but it should work without them. They're more for making sure you land in the correct location rather than trying to uh, reduce re-entry heating and stuff like that. At least that's the way I used them. Okay, well, launch was never the big problem with this vehicle, so I'm just hoping that none of the changes I made will create a problem. Of course, I removed the control surfaces on the, on the little uh, wings. So could do something in terms of stability but so far it's been fine there are little control surfaces on the on the wing strikes these elevons I'm not too sure they're necessary at all but uh, I decided to put them on in lieu of the of the elevons on the big winglets uh, I don't know what you want to call them they are a little bit more than fins since they're actually bearing something on them. So I don't want to call them fins because they're not purely aerodynamic, they're actually structural. Obviously the payload should be fairly light for this launcher. So uh, no undue burden to orbit as far as I can tell. Certainly the aerodynamic strakes look better than actually putting canards on the top there. So there's that plus. We're going to 120 kilometers, I think. Based on how much delta V we have, 120 is reasonable. So we're going to test the numbers out at 120 kilometers. Okay, shut down. All right. And fairing separation. Very important. Remember, even though the payload is very light, the first stage has to bear the mass of the second stage. So that's always a burden for it. But relatively speaking, we could increase the payload quite a lot and it wouldn't affect the first stage very much because most of its load is actually a second stage. Okay, I'll keep it to that. So 121.5 by 118.2 and we should be good to separate the mission and yep everything should be fine. Let's separate. Okay, main mission second engine, second stage engine 
Ignition. Did I... Yes, I action group those solar panels. Very good. So it's all set and ready to go once we get an uh, asteroid for it to send itself out to. All right. Thanks to the retroburn of those rockets, we're at 121.2 by 116.4. For testing purposes, I'm going to retroburn at 135 degrees east. And so I'm going to keep that consistent so that we have that uh, key number to work with. And that'll help when uh, this peninsula is in the dark and I can't use it to aim my periapsis. So we'll just do the retroburn at the same point each time. Okay. But the key thing again is just the survival of the launcher through, through re-entry. And I'm going to aim for a periapsis... Well... With, uh, with stock and without any aerodynamic surfaces, I would normally aim with, uh, at least in previous testing with other launchers, uh, with the OBX for instance, uh, at uh, 26 kilometers periapsis. Figuring that we've got far and aerodynamic surfaces, I need to decrease that, aim lower. And so I'm going to go for, I think, uh, 23? Let's say three kilometers down on it. Let, let's let's call it that for now, and we'll see. Tried doing that on the Sparrow, but the Sparrow didn't have the aerodynamic surfaces, so it ended up way inland. But actually, one kilometer. Di oh shoot! I overdid it. Talking. That's fine. Uh, we weren't in our reserve fuel anyway. We had uh, spare fuel left over, but. Yep, just talking away, not paying attention. So we're actually a little bit west of the peninsula that I normally aim for with the periapsis. Okay, here we go. 200,000 or so. Actually, this isn't... Uh, I don't even know if this is actually the main cost of the vehicle, honestly. Well, tension's building. Unfortunately, we're not going to find out if it actually works until like the last moment, right? It's only really the last 10 kilometers in altitude that we started getting serious situations. Now I reduce the... I'm trying to think about what kind of altitude I expect to cross the coast at. I guess 31 kilometers, 3 kilometers lower, but that'd be that's only a naive assumption. Because uh, on stock, I would normally expect 34, and we're doing 3 kilometers less, but it might not work that way. Currently worried about hitting those mountains, of course. Also, re-entry heat. Let's take a look. Wow, it's getting hot already. Well, something's threatening to blow up. Was this really the sort of temperatures we saw before? Maybe. You know, I bet those... They... Uh, I've had the problem where tweak scale makes parts fake overheat, right? Uh, now these... These, uh, these are all tweak scaled. The uh, structural stuff. And this is all tweak scaled to get to the right size. Maybe that's... Maybe they're what's causing the sound. We're really skimming right along, aren't we? Really hot though. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if they really overheated some parts. Uh-oh. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Something blew up, didn't it? Oh, the elevons. Those are the ones at the end of the of the strakes. Guess some of them left. We've got eight of them. Three of them just burned off. We've got the center engine on the stack overheating, I believe. Yeah, but it doesn't seem to be doing it too much. Temperatures on the 
on the landing struts are going down. We're still skimming right along. It looks like we'll over overshoot the mountains at least. We've got a flag planted. I don't really need to target it. Vectors seem all oh. Vectors seem all right. Heating still threatening to do something to me. Okay, I will here switch from Smart ESS to SAS. We've got some roll. But roll control is not maxing out here. Not that we have much roll control to begin with, so that's actually pretty good. It's actually possible that uh, this roll is just in compensation for the fact that we lost some of those elevons earlier. So just waiting for our velocity to go below Mach 1 so I can deploy the parachutes. We're clearly going to be landing short of the KSC. So that was 23 kilometers. So probably we need something between 23 and 24 to make it all right. Okay, this is going to be tough. Oh boy. Not much altitude, you see. Okay, deploy parachutes. And I'm gonna use some throttle here to slow us down, because we're going down too fast for the parachutes to really do things properly. Gotta take SAS off. Okay. Gear down. Okay, full parachute deployment, but I sense I'm going down way too fast. Let's keep going down though. Don't want to start going up. Uh, okay, 200 meters. Yeah, so we, we needed those bursts of the throttle, otherwise we'd have been in trouble. 11.4 meters per second, definitely not safe, but I'm going to hold off until I'm really close. We seem to be a little bit off on the... Well, let, let's leave it be. Uh-oh. Ooh. Gosh darn it. I almost had it there. I just uh, thought I was on the ground and because of the there was the um, lag. I thought I was on the ground but I wasn't. Obviously you can't judge from this altitude because it's measured from the center of the vehicle. But then I ended up smashing in at uh, 7.5 meters per second. I think I could have saved it if it wasn't 7.5 meters per second. Well, um... I don't think this was a sufficient test. We certainly didn't recover this. And it looks like we need to go like 24 kilometers instead of 23. Let's try let's try 24 kilometers and see how far how much closer to the KSC we get with that. And we'll just launch another tug. I mean, we've gotten paid to tug in an asteroid. I think we can launch another tug, right? Okay, here we go. Uh, same vehicle, same payload. Uh, so for those keeping track, we will have a third space tug up there now. And so, yep, lots of capabilities. And of course these space tugs could tug anything. We still have all that debris in uh, moon orbit. And we could bring some of that back using these space tugs. So, yeah, and we can refuel them by just setting up a fuel tank and having them I grab onto it and suck it dry so yep we can do that let's go
Uh oh, uh, the Delta V is reading such that I don't have this reserved. Ah. Okay, well, let's do some fuel pumping here to make sure that we have our reserve fuel. Certainly needed it the way that we descended last time. You might wonder why this tank was drying first, and that's because this uh, these engines, the four outside engines, see that as the furthest tank. They are directly attached to this main tank, after all. Okay, and I should reserve this one as well. Okay. Now, uh, once we've got our trajectory data done, so uh, we weren't too far off. Uh, 23 kilometers seemed to get us, well, right there. Uh, 68 kilometers, or is that us? Or, yeah, that, I think that was it. So 68 kilometers there. And uh, so I expect that, oh, we'll go to 85. I expect that uh, we'll get a good sense of how we need to land and then we can add air brakes to fill around with it then we'll have to adjust for having the air brakes slowing us down so we'll probably have to overshoot a bit but for now I think I've demonstrated that at least uh, we're getting closer to a point where we can recover this safely even without the air brakes Though, uh, certainly, given the speed that we were descending at, they will help. Uh, actually, just for the vertical part, where the parachutes, uh, where we weren't uh, able to pop the parachutes quickly enough, I think uh, the air base would help a lot. But let's see if we can get this done without any... I mean, we were very close, so let's just see if we can get this done without air brake help for now. Okay, I'm going with a somewhat shallower tra trajectory than last time because we seem to be a little bit high up. You know, I wonder if we could just skip the parachutes altogether and do a suicide burn right down to the surface. Got suicide burn countdown right there. Probably not the way to go with uh, expensive vehicle like this, but just saying, it's a thought. Would more try to average out to 120. Ah, let's keep it there. Okay. Going to rule that uh, sufficiently similar to the previous orbit and separate. Good. Light these engines. So the panel's out. And now we've got another one of these guys ready to go. Okay, same idea as last time. We got 996 meters per second this time. Better trajectory, like I said. I uh, the going shallower helped. So, yep, just time warp to 135 again, and just see if we can. Slow down to a touchdown properly this time, perhaps closer to KSC. Alright, 24 kilometers. So we are expecting to lose those, uh, those little elevons again. We'll just consider them ablative. So uh, the elevons are a form of ablative shielding apparently. As long as they're the only thing that falls off or burns up, I'm, I'm not too bothered by that. Well, a little bit bothered because it's really loud, but but uh, I'll take it. It's better than uh, one of the more significant. If one of these wing connector surfaces uh, got destroyed, that might seriously imbalance the lift on this vehicle. But actually, the elevons don't create that much lift. So I mean, uh, the the main goal, as far as killing the roll, this has worked marvelously. So we've got that part down. It's just we, I mean, that's just a a step towards a goal, and the goal is actually bringing this back to the KSC intact. And that needs a little bit more work. And again, the air brakes uh, may help, but I think I can manage it without, without going to them yet. And they'll sort of be 
make things a little bit more smooth. Physics is probably having a little bit of a burden. Okay, standard overheating thing. I think at this point the Elevons are just doing the fake overheating. At some point they actually do overheat though. We shouldn't get hotter than we did last time because we are actually higher in the atmosphere in our aim. And you can see that as we cross the the coastline at about 30 kilometers this time. Okay, definitely coming in higher. Will we end up on land or in the water? Could be interesting to test a water landing with this. Oop. Same three. I think they're the ones on the bottom. 24 seems pretty good. 24 kilometer periapsis on a 120 kilometer orbit. Actually, it was more like 117 on the apoapsis after we burned. So, sort of as expected, the number is somewhere between 23 and 24 kilometers. But uh, definitely closer to 24 than 23. In fact, maybe we can slow down a bit here. Doesn't help that much. Just to let the atmosphere do it, I think. Okay, maybe now. Just so I can deploy the parachutes. SAS off. Okay, full parachute deployments. Still gonna run the engines. Okay. Stat 11.4 meters per second that we saw last time. SAS back on. Let's see, I'm gonna aim it for about 3 meters per second, let's say be overly cautious about this. I think I have enough time on the stage to do that. We're swaying a bit. Okay, we're in the water. I'm waiting to see if we flop. I think we're okay. It, it, it's starting to tilt a little bit, but I think... Uh, Hold on. Uh, why won't it recover vessel? I don't need you to auto save. I need you to recover. Okay, there we go. And that, of course, is where the game crashed, uh, which is what I was afraid of uh, when adding the B9 parts in. I'm really at the limit as far as RAM is concerned, and it was an out of memory exception, though not one I've seen before, so that was a little bit weird. But yeah, the it looks like uh, that is still there, so perhaps we can recover it now. It certainly didn't recover it there, so let's see. Please recover, please recover. Okay, uh, so success, right? 97% uh, of total value. Note, it's uh, I guess the total value is around f uh, close to 40,000 funds, not including the fuel. The fuel costs are pretty spectacular, I think. Uh, but 40,000 funds. Let's go to the v uh, VAB and see a breakdown of the cost of the Maximus. I'm uh, genuinely curious because that's quite low. I mean, when you think about the Maximus, it's 200,000 funds altogether. So let's let's see. So yeah, to save RAM, I'm gonna have to find some parts to delete. But that's a trick now that I've got so many things in motion that uh, I'll be a little bit worried about messing things up. So, but yeah, I'm. I might have to backtrack on adding the few B9 parts that I did add just so that I can save that situation. But anyway, so 248,000 funds. If I take off the fairings, you see the fairings are 23,000 funds all on their own. So just those fairings are a tenth of the cost of the vehicle. The payload itself is not that much. The, the tug is on its own 17,000 funds. So we'll attach that back. 
So 17,000. So the rest of this is 208. Let's uh, see now. Let's separate like this. So 88. Um, so this is about 70,000 funds to second stage. Uh, without its fuel, uh, uh, the fuel is about 6,000 funds. Uh, I haven't uh, dumped the fuel here, but that won't be too much more. So that's that. All right, so that's 70,000 funds for the second stage. The first stage, uh, we're at 211 right now. If you dump the fuel, you'll see that the fuel is the main cost. And unfortunately, no way of retrieving that. So of the 211,000 that we have here right now, not including the fairings at all, these are also very expensive, uh, the fuel is about 81,000 funds. So uh, the, the this lower portion here is what uh, 42,000 funds. So the first stage is 42,000 funds dry. Oh, I didn't even dump this fuel here. So it's actually. 39,000 funds dry and the fuel is 84,000 funds. So yeah, it's uh <laughs> it's pretty cheap considering uh considering the fuel it lists up and all that. And so we saw that uh, we we didn't get uh too much back, but that's actually the cost of this. The fuel is a huge cost. Anyway, that's the maximus for you and I'm pretty satisfied we did recover the vehicle. We managed to land it safely in the water, though not the land. Maybe we should just keep going for water instead of trying to uh, touch down on land. But uh, yeah, uh, we've got plenty of space tugs up there now. So in the next episode, we're going to take a look at those asteroids. So yeah, I'll leave it here. I quit while I'm ahead, I think. And uh, so with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.